Hi, my name is Mike and I'm the developer and instructor for this course, Automating QGIS with Python. You'll notice that the subtitle is Take Your QGIS Skills to the Next Level. And the reason is that this is a course for GIS specialists, not necessarily for professional programmers. Of course, you'll need to be able to program and some prior experience with Python is required. But the focus of this course is to show GIS specialists how to solve GIS specific problems through automation with Python scripts. My goal will be to focus on solving geospatial problems, and I will intentionally keep the programming fairly basic. But I believe that you'll come out of this course with a solid foundation that you can use to address your own specific geospatial tasks. My intention is to follow this course with a different one focused specifically on developing plugins for QGIS. That will include a lot more detail on the complexities of programming with Python. The kind of stuff that tends to scare off GIS specialists who just want to get some work done. Because automation is basically creating solutions that don't already exist in the native QGIS interface, or doing things automatically that would take a long time to do with existing tools when they do exist. I learned to program in the early 80s when I was still in high school. My father was interested in computers and bought one to help him with his business, but he didn't have the time or inclination to learn how to use it. And so that became my summer job. Computers in the 80s were far more complicated than they are today, and you almost needed to be able to program to use one. There wasn't a lot of canned software available. So I learned how to program to solve problems for my dad. Years later, I went to college to study ecology, and I learned about a new technology called GIS. And it seemed to fit with my background in computer technology, so I signed up for a minor in GIS and spatial analysis. Because I knew how to program, I was always drawn to the scripting languages of whatever GIS software I was using. Starting with AML in the old days of Workstation ArcInfo, and then Avenue when ArcView came out, and Visual Basic when ArcMap came out, and then a little bit of Python for various versions of Esri products, as well as JavaScript and PHP for web-based mapping. So when I started using QGIS almost exclusively, I inevitably also began focusing on Python because QGIS uses Python as its scripting language, as well as a basis for extending the interface with plugins. Most of my work since then has been in the field of environmental consulting, and it has always been difficult to explain to my bosses how much of a benefit it is to know how to automate GIS processes. But rest assured that my coworkers and project managers always knew its value when I told them I could automate something for them and I hope that by the end of this course, you'll have a fuller understanding of the value of automating QGIS with Python as well. Now, I make a distinction between automation and plugins for several reasons. I think that they are very distinct modes of programming that require different approaches. Automation is usually used for solving specific problems, specific to the job that you're working on or specific to your company, etc something that probably won't have broad applications to the public at large. Plugins, on the other hand, are focused on solving more general problems that other people might have interest in. They're an easy way to distribute your solution to the broader GIS community. Now, these problems that you're trying to solve might arise because the existing GIS solutions require a lot of boring, repetitive tasks. Nobody likes boring, repetitive tasks, and your coworkers will absolutely love you if you can save them from hours or weeks of drudgery, even if the boss doesn't mind paying them to do it. In addition, asking humans to do boring, repetitive tasks is a recipe for errors. The more boring and more repetitive, the more opportunity for human mistakes, and the more likely that people will take advantage of that opportunity because they're just not paying close attention. People just aren't designed for comparing three spreadsheets simultaneously finding differences between them, and typing without making mistakes. This type of work, however, is perfect for computers. They don't care about drudgery, they're very fast, they have perfect vision, and they never make mistakes. Only programmers make mistakes. Sometimes existing software just doesn't have any solutions to fit your task. This is very common in GIS software, which is used by everyone from ecologists, to city planners, to the military, to applications like Uber and Google Maps. It's just impossible to anticipate every possible need from such a diverse group of users, and if you could, the software would be very complex. In many cases, you know exactly what you want to do, you just can't find an existing tool that will do it for you. This is another very common use case for automation. You don't want to save the world. You don't want to spend 20 hours learning a new technology. 
You don't want to be responsible for maintaining code that other people are using. You just want to solve a problem with a minimum of fuss. Often your solution might be used just once or a very few times. But it might also be something very simple that gets run every day or every month, like backing things up, exporting a shapefile and sending it to your client, etc. The point is that it's just not worth the effort of learning complex technologies, testing for every possible error, creating a beautiful interface, etc. if you're a GIS specialist, not a programmer, and you just want to get your job done. And this is the province of scripting or automation. On the other hand, you may have an idea that would have more general application, and you want to make your solution available for other people to use. Maybe you're a scientist who has developed a new statistical technique that you want to make available so others can analyze their own data. Or maybe you've just gotten sick and tired of the annoying way that QGIS does something, and you think that you can do it better. In these cases, developing a plugin is the easiest way to get your custom solutions out to the masses. Creating a plugin is not exactly rocket science, but it does require a level of programming competence that's far beyond that required for automation. The need to understand object oriented programming, not just using an existing object that someone else created, but extending those that others have written and creating your own from scratch. You'll also have to know about event driven programming how to know when the user clicks on a map or a menu item and how to respond. You'll have no idea what the user is going to do, and trust me, they'll do things that you can't even imagine. So you have to think about all the things that could possibly go wrong and think how you'll deal with them in advance. For example, you may have all your data stored in a PostGIS database and use very descriptive field names, but then someone uses your tool and they're using a shapefile and those field names all get truncated to 10 characters. You also have to learn how to program graphical user interfaces with dialog boxes, menus, toolbars, etc. Because in today's world, nobody wants to go back to a command line. And that's not a trivial task. Finally, if you upload a plugin to the QGIS plugin repository, you'll have some level of responsibility for maintaining your code, keeping up with new versions as they change, documenting your solution, managing bug reports, etc. You should probably learn about version control systems and unit testing and many other things that don't have much to do with finding a solution to your specific issue. The bottom line is that it's not a trivial choice to make, and you will have to consider carefully if you want to focus on GIS or put the effort into learning all of those technologies and becoming a full-fledged software developer. But this shouldn't discourage you. Simply being able to write scripts from the QGIS user interface is very powerful. It will help you immensely in your career in ways that you can't even imagine. And if you decide eventually that a plug-in is what you need, and you want to put in the effort, it will always be available for you. Or you might even be able to find somebody else who can use the scripts that you've written as a basis for a plug-in. Now I mentioned that this is not a beginning Python course. There are many of those available, and my goal is not to reinvent the wheel or compete with other people who are focusing on general Python. But I do have another course available called Introduction to Python Programming for GIS Applications. And that course goes over a lot of the details of Python as related to geospatial applications. And I will expect students of this course to have at least that level of knowledge. This course is focused specifically on using Python to automate QGIS.